We last saw him in January, so it's been a year. Has it been a year? Yep, almost to the day. Hope okay. uh, plays a, a an important role, and in fact, it's one that uh, consumes me. Already? I hope so. Oh, okay. I'm a physician and I'm a scientist, so I combine the two. I uh, teach medical students, uh, graduate students, uh, undergraduate students. I diagnose all kinds of genetic disorders. Uh, that's what I do. I see the rarest of the rare things. Many times uh, being diagnosed with something rare is not good news. Uh, many times it means uh, very bad outcomes, unfortunately. And so I've, I, 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 I spend a lot of time uh, trying to explain that to families, understand what they're dealing with, and best to my ability, give them prognosis information as well as many things we can do. It may not be a, a, a direct cure, but many times we can support and make things easier. Pompeii disease is a genetic disorder of, it turns out, not only the heart muscle, but also limb muscles, the muscles of your arms and legs, as well as the muscles that control your breathing. If you happen to have the form of disease where it's showing up very early, within a couple months of birth, you are very much at a higher risk of dying from that disorder uh, because the severity is such that it affects your muscles that much more rapidly, it affects your heart that much more rapidly, and the typical lifespan uh, up until a few years ago, uh, you wouldn't live past the age of two. I had the opportunity to participate in a clinical trial in which we first attempted a treatment for this disorder in the United States, and subsequent to that, based upon a number of studies both in the United States and internationally, a drug was uh, derived exactly from the, the, the drug we had initially studied, and that's now available to all Pompeii patients worldwide. And so now in my clinic, um, I have the opportunity to see these patients. They still turn up, uh, they're still being diagnosed, and, but now I can prescribe something for which a few years ago there was nothing. Within a year or two, we find dramatic, not only uh, stalling of the disease process, but actually reversal. And now. These children are coming in and seeing me, and they're, they're able to hop about the room, hop up on the bed to see me, and they're actually happy to see the doctor, and that's very fulfilling for me to see that, uh, in fact, we can, we can do that kind of a dramatic uh, impact uh, on these cases. We can now uh, use some of the gene transfer technologies that we've developed in my lab and use them to attack other diseases that you might not necessarily think are genetic. Uh, I'll give you an example, colon cancer. Another example, we're attempting to develop uh, gene transfer strategies as vaccines for common, or not common, but um, infections. Uh, for example, AIDS is one we're targeting, as well as more recently, we've just published papers describing our attempts to develop a malaria vaccine. Um, these are diseases, HIV, AIDS, and malaria that are a, a scourge and continue to be. They are very difficult targets to attempt to treat with vaccines, unlike some other diseases that your children may routinely get vaccinated for their first couple of years of life. And in order to attack these diseases requires state-of-the-art technology. And, and in our learning about these systems, we're finding that maybe the technologies we've got and we've developed for other diseases can be adapted. And in fact, we are doing that and moving these things into, into human clinical trials as well. If I was strictly in the laboratory, I personally just think I would not have a clue about many of the, the conditions or the diseases that I'm attempting to treat right now based on our research. Um, being in contact with patients uh, at a bare minimum is just sobering, you know, to see what families go through when they're affected with uh, a certain disorder um, really just humbles you. Uh, it also humbles you in how much we don't know about many diseases. Certainly there's a lot we do know. but. I am constantly learning new things from my patients. And uh, one, the day you think you know everything is the day you should probably not be a doctor because uh, there's just too much out there that still we don't know. And patients teach me a lot. Every time I, I finally get in and talk with a patient, a patient's family one-on-one, -on -one, it just reaffirms for me why I'm there and why I've chosen this field. And um, I recommend that to uh, any of the medical students that are thinking about coming to, to medical school, that it truly is a, a fulfilling uh, career choice.